This will be a quick overview of the testing setup that I'll be using for my GTX 580 review. So as you can see here, I do have two GeForce GTX 580s. I have one from MSI, and then I also have one from EVGA. So that means that I will be including SLI testing for the GTX 580 as well as Crossfire testing for the Radeon 5870, which as of right now, is the closest competitor for the GTX 580, although I don't expect that to be the case for uh, for very much longer in the future. Now, one of the other comparisons I also want to make, just to include it in my charts, is the GTX 480, which the 580 is replacing. And just because it represents such a good value, I also have two MSI GeForce GTX 460 Hawk Edition cards because two 460s, when they came out on the market, with the exceptional scaling that you get in Crossfire as well as with the outstanding overclocking of the Hawk Edition card, became a great value for a performance enthusiast because two 460s was actually cheaper than a 480 but provided better performance. So I really want to see where the GTX 580 falls in relation to two overclocked 460s which are out there on the market for a very good price these days. Now I want to introduce you to the test bench really quick. I have my 3.8 gigahertz uh, Core i7-875K. I have that running with four gigs of Kingston HyperX RAM. I've got an ASUS Crossfire and SLI ready motherboard down there somewhere. So I've got a new CPU cooler now actually. It keeps my uh, chip quite a bit cooler than the A50 I was using before. This is a Silenx Ephysio Extreme. Now down here I have a Cougar SX Series 850 watt power supply which is more than capable of powering all the cards down here below. Mind you, not all at the same time. That would be quite unreasonable. And then for my boot drive I'm using an Intel X25M 80 gig drive. Now I have changed my monitor setup slightly as you may or may not be able to tell. That is a 30 inch monitor, so I'm gonna be doing all of my benchmarks other than 3D Mark at 2560 by 1600. 3D Mark is gonna be run in the extreme profile because the reality of it is the GPUs I'm testing here today are all premium high-end products, so we're gonna use them as they're intended to be used and that is at extremely high resolution and find out how they all compare to each other. Stay tuned for more. Now for StarCraft II, it's pretty obvious that with every setup from the GTX 480 up through the 460s and SLI and the 580, 580s and SLI, we got almost exactly the same frame rate. So what that comes down to is a CPU bottleneck. It means that this game cannot take advantage of the extra GPU power that we're throwing at it. Now I was not running StarCraft II with anti-aliasing, and if we turned on anti-aliasing, we'd probably see some improvement. However, with that unit count, Bear in mind, we were using a very action-intensive part of the game to do our benchmarking. We were not able to find any difference between, well, one very high-end solution and another even more uber high-end solution. Mafia 2 is being tested with PhysX, so we have not included any results for Radeon cards. They didn't fail the test, they just can't run it with PhysX. For Metro 2033 with PhysX, you probably noticed the GTX 460 SLI config is not in there, and that's because it failed. The reason is that the GTX 460 only has one gig of video memory, and what that means is because the two cards in SLI can't share that video memory, you have effectively one gig of video memory, and at that resolution, with those settings, with that particular game, you need more RAM. So that's what the GTX 480 and the GTX 580 had as an advantage over those lower end cards. So that's why I wasn't able to include any 460 SLI results. I did another run through of Metro 2033 with no PhysX so that I could include the Radeon cards. And uh, as you can see, the GTX 460 SLI config still didn't make it. I got a benchmark result and it kind of fell in line with everything else, but I can't present that to you guys because when I was playing through the game, it did not feel right. Like I had times where it dipped down and it felt like two FPS, even though at the end the benchmark reported something like very, very playable. So. Uh, that's why I could not include that result there. 
Battlefield Bad Company 2 is actually one of the games that uh, scaled extremely well with all of the different cards that we ran and uh, we were able to generate very consistent results. I did a little playthrough of the uh, in between going through the town here and then where at the end you find a tank. Uh, that's the part of this game that was used for the uh, benchmarking purposes. And uh, try and take out the guy with the rocket launcher. Now, you can't get a consistent run through every time, so I did have to do multiple run throughs with each GPU and average them out, but I think overall we get a result that's fairly representative of what each graphics card is capable of in this particular shooter game. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, I didn't have a whole lot of time to spend with the GTX 580s. My Radeon 5870 Crossfire setup was doing some weird stuff in Crisis where I was getting worse performance than a single card at 2560 by 1600 I didn't even have the time to really look up and find out if that's a common issue because there aren't too many people who are trying to run Crisis with anti-aliasing at 2560 by 1600 with Radeon 5870 Crossfire so that it's uh, probably not all that well documented but basically sorry I couldn't include those results you can check out everything else though. For power consumption, bear in mind, all of my measurements are taken from the wall and they are an absolute peak value. So you can expect that usually while gaming it'll be quite a bit lower, but this is the maximum power consumption that I was able to pull from the wall with this system during the entire benchmarking process for each GPU. So that means that if I was doing something CPU intensive at the same time as gaming, it could probably be higher. So make sure that when you're budgeting a PSU for your build, if you're gonna use one of these new cards, like say for example, the GTX 580, that you plan accordingly. So here's the settings that uh, we ran Metro 2033 on, although actually, as you saw from my introduction, when I was at home and I was not at work, I had a 30-inch monitor at my disposal, so the benchmarks were done, remember, at two different resolutions for Metro 23, 2560 by 1600 as well as 1920 by 1200 although these are the other settings that are being used, everything is enabled, so we're going to do some quick gameplay here while I just talk a little bit about the GTX 580 and what this particular game means to the market. So this is the run-through that I did in order to test Metro 2033. It's uh, on the level of the bridge and I follow this guy around, kill some dudes. Basically I've got the GTX 580 set up running right now and I'm just wanting to show you how beefy this setup is. It really does blow away everything else, especially in the 2560 by 1600 resolution because so many of the other setups that I tried to run this game at those settings with just outright failed. They just couldn't do it. And here you can see it's butter smooth even at 1920 by 1200 everything maxed out. I'm seeing you know 50 frames per second. Hold on I better put on my gas mask. In just a second you guys will have some combat to check out and so uh, that's one of the things I really noticed about the lesser setups is that especially when the action gets a little bit more intense the frame rate dips and it can even sort of skip a couple and that's where it becomes unplayable very very quickly so I got a monster rushing at me kill the guy stays very smooth no matter what I'm doing shotgun 40 FPS still anyway so all of that aside GTX 580, what does it mean? Well, it's really, really expensive, so not everyone can afford one. It's going to be up over $500 Canadian at launch. However, unlike its predecessor, the 480, NVIDIA has really gotten a few things under control. They've completely fixed the problem with the excess heat output for the power compared to the competition that's on the market today. They've fixed the problem with the noise, both by using their innovative vapor chamber cooler, as well as their adaptive fan profile. So make sure you do check out my videos that are dedicated to those two aspects of this card. I show how the fan ramps up and down very slowly so it sounds very smooth, and I also disassemble the MSI card so you can see the vapor chamber cooler up close and personal. And they've added more power, and it comes in at the same price as a GTX 580. So it's really hard to uh, to find anything wrong with it, I guess. It's a super premium product, like I said, so it's quite expensive, but it's pretty much a game changer, and it is, without a doubt, whether it's a loan or an SLI, 
the fastest graphics card solution that you can buy today. So thank you for checking out my performance review of the GTX 580. Don't forget to check out a lot of the other videos that I've done around this important launch for NVIDIA. And thanks for checking out Linus Tech Tips. Don't forget to subscribe.